Jimmy, Johnny, Tokyo, Tokyo and Percy. Yep. Okay. How many of your llamas are named after the Tokyo. 400 or whatever? All of them. And you remember them all? Yeah, yeah. We, they're all, you know, kind of like racehorses. They have, we have their pedigree and they're tracked on a database and you know, all the lineage. Wow. Yeah, he's ready to go. That would be perfect. our standard weight. We would try to keep 35 and 35. These guys, all four of them, will easily do 45, 45. And so, toll your call. You guys are an old white dudes anyway. Yeah, I think our gear will be fine. It's just packing elk. But... When you pack out the elk, don't be afraid to do 90 pounds total on. Okay. So, Randy did 105, 110, 92, 94 on his last pack out. As I was like, geez, Randy. <laughs> so they'll Better do give them an extra cookie. Yeah, they'll do it. Um, so go ahead and undo those real quick. So when you guys are hiking on the trail, there's some llamas, some days that are better leaders and some days that are worse leaders, but all these guys will kind of play any role you need them to. And if one llama's kind of starting to go slow or you're tugging him on him, don't, don't necessarily put up with it, just switch him. Just like, okay, we're going to put Johnny in front, you know. And a lot of times you just get weary of, of leading. Otherwise, you're kind of holding like this, just like you got, we did, you know. And just kind of walk natural pace. You guys probably walk a little faster than two miles an hour. Their natural gait is just a straight two miles an hour. That's their pace. And so if you're like, oh, we got 10 miles, we're going to take us five hours. And you can go a little faster, but the biggest thing with llamas is downhill is the hardest thing in the world to learn. And the reason is because they have so much weight they carry up here. That's why they have their long necks to serve as a counterbalance. And so when they're going downhill, it's the hardest thing for them. And so it's important to give them breaks. And a lot of people, like, when you are going downhill and you break, usually it'll turn sideways to rest whatever ligaments or bones were bothering you. <laughs> and the same with llamas. When you're going downhill heavy, just stop them and turn to the side so ah, they can relieve that pressure on that front end. Mm. And so... It's important to just remember that rule when you're going downhill, try to keep that two mile an hour pace because we, we can go so much faster, you know, downhill. Yeah. Just watch what they eat when they get when you get there, make sure they've got plenty to eat. Like the, the bushes and this, that would be ideal. Yeah. They'll peel that up and eat that grass and eat the dry pine needles. Perfect. I saw them grab a mouthful of pine needles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, just move them probably, depending on, it's so dry this year, you know, that I, you might need to move them twice a day. But keeping them fed is really important. And so, and then they like to see each other. You know, if you put a llama over the hill, he's going to go <laughs> all night because he wants to see his buddy. So they just need to be an eye shot of each other and they'll be good to go. Yeah, those three rules. I mean, you guys got the saddling down good. Don, I would just make sure you get that front one a little tighter every time. And then one pound on the panniers. Make sure they have plenty of food and water. They'll take really good care of you. And you'll kind of find a system like what, you know, like Donnie does great with Percy in yeah. Tokyo. And so, once you kind of have the rhythm, <laughs> just kind of stick with it and it'll go really well. You guys have any questions? I don't think so. And that little pocket manual, you know, if you have an opportunity to... I downloaded both of them, so I got them on my phone. That answers all your, all your questions, the okay. diagrams and stuff, so... I was just going to charge you for my videography <laughs> fee okay. and sell it to your customers. Okay, that sounds good. Darn it. I'll trade you that for the fertilizer right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. What need he's it saying here. is that isn't worth. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Well, we are uh, all trained up. We got the lowdown from Bo on how to handle the llamas and how to pack them. So that's what we're doing now is. We've got all our gear in dry bags, and we're going through and weighing them, trying to get everything balanced. Each side of the panniers has to be within a pound of the other side, so we did a really good job of organizing all our gear between hunting and camp and food and clothes, and now all that's out the window because we've got to get them within one pound. So we are... What is that? So growing up, an old guy told me, always keep a piece of candy in your pocket. It could be a lifesaver. Good thing I like lifesavers. So where was I? I don't remember what I was saying. We are going through and organizing gear to get it to weigh within a pound of each other 
And then we're going to load the panniers, have those all ready to go. So tomorrow morning we get to the trailhead, unload the llamas, and throw the panniers on, and we're off. So we're going in eight and a half miles and going to set up camp and then go in another three to four each day from there if we need to. And we're looking for an elk here in Idaho. Rifle season opened three days ago. And we've got the next five days to... Uh, Drag llamas up and down the mountains looking for an elk. Well, oh, we can either turn around and go home or we can unload the llamas. It's all up to you. <laughs> I'm just asking when we're gonna get going. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Donnie's over there taking his medicine. His snake oil and something else for his knee. His pre-adventure medicine. <laughs> I'm gonna unload llamas. There is, there, I mean, there's a slight resemblance. Exactly. Yeah. They got about the same look, teeth. Look Looks at like the, back. the same teeth. <laughs> look here at the back. He's got the same cut going. Well, we've gone about seven miles and we can see the ridge that we're planning to go to and set up camp. And it's every bit as steep as I remember it being and then some. It was really cold the last several mornings and even during the day the highs were mid 40s, but it warmed up today. We're probably pushing 60 here in the canyon. But it's supposed to be a couple days this week. The highs are in the low 30s, 31, 33. And the lows are down in the teens. So hopefully that gets the elk moving and a little more active.
well, we made it, I think. The first flat spot I've seen in eight miles, so might as well stay here. Doesn't stay flat for long, though. Not a whole lot of feed. There's more on the hill there, so. Take them out here and make it five days. That's my plan. There's a flat spot down by the creek there that we can put the tents on. Stake the llamas right here. Everything is uphill. I don't know how that works, but it's steep. We're only, it might be a hundred feet off the river. <laughs> Long ways to go. We got a thousand vertical feet just to get up to where we can glass. Probably 2,500 vertical feet up to where the elk are gonna be. So for tonight, we've only got about two hours. So we're just gonna climb a thousand vertical, get up to where we can glass, and try to make a game plan for tomorrow. Hopefully see or hear something. But it's big country, steep country. See nothing, didn't hear nothing. elevation in 90 minutes. Not see anything, not hear anything. It's 
beautiful open brushy hillsides across there. If they were going to feed out on something, that would probably be it. But nothing. You gotta see Donnie's food bag here. This is his snack bag he brought in. A whole bunch of fun size candy bars and gummy lifesavers and looks like a Halloween trick-or-treat bag. Hey, she's talking about you. <laughs> you, you found my stuff? <laughs> I found your snack bag. In case anybody comes by we'll have... It's not even Halloween season. They put all that candy out for hunting season. <laughs> Good. Tomorrow's bag. <laughs> <laughs> Got one for each day. Yeah. <laughs> well, day one is officially over. No elk spotted, no tracks, no sign. We're gonna go downriver another two miles tomorrow and climb back up. We'll probably get up 2,500 vertical feet and uh, see if we can find some sign up there. But hot, warm, it's warm today, dry, need some weather, looks like Wednesday, might be getting some weather, so fingers crossed, I don't know if we can make five days of climbing that mountain, 2,500 vertical feet, but we'll, uh, we'll do it tomorrow anyway. My legs hurt just watching that. <laughs> Watching that, remembering, oh, we're gonna go up there. <laughs> yeah, my neck hurt from literally from looking up. It was so steep that with the backpack on, you were looking up like that, and my neck had a kink in it. Yeah, from straining. And then coming down the hill, knees hurt. It was yeah steep country, but that was uh, my first experience with llamas. Literally, first time I'd ever. Been around llamas, used them, packed with them, and yeah. I'm hooked. Yes, imagine our surprise when we were thinking that, oh, we're gonna take llamas in there, and we show up with all of our shaps and everything, <laughs> ready to ride, and Bo <laughs> says, no, you can't ride llamas. <laughs> They're to pack your stuff. But why do they have saddles? I know. <laughs> Jesse actually had a great idea. She said, you know what you could do? tie one end of a hammock to the saddle on one of them <laughs> and one end of the hammock to the saddle on the other and then just ride in the hammock between them. There you go. So that was creative thinking. Don't let Bo know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Bo Beatty, Wilderness Ridge, Trail Llamas. If you followed Randy Newberg at all, you know Bo. And if you haven't followed Randy at all, now you know Bo and you need to know Bo. Yeah. Just incredible guy nice. and he has a llama operation they're pack llamas i mean they they are trained for packing and i i always had that stigma of llamas they spit they are stubborn they can't pack much weight they'll lay down if they get tired and you can't get them up 
and not the case. None of those issues. Yeah, with these llamas, they are trained for packing. They're in shape, and when you rent them from Bo, he has all the gear, the everything, and he spent hour with us. Just going over. Just showing us how to hook up the, the packs, how to, what to feed them, their personalities. Yeah. And with an hour of, of time with Bo, I was comfortable going into the back country with pack animals that I've never used before. And they were awesome. They eat anything. Yes. Literally, they eat leaves, dirt, pine needles, rocks. I <laughs> mean, maybe yeah. not rocks and dirt, but they were eating dry, dead pine needles off the ground. Every time we'd go by big, lush green leaves, they were grabbing it and chewing on it. And so. They purr. They purr. <laughs> yeah. Johnny's my favorite. Yep, Johnny was a good boy. He was, yeah, good one. So check out Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas if you ever have a need. And, you know, even just packing our camp in, our packs were light. I carried the rifle and maybe 10 pounds. So we went in eight miles, seven and a half, eight miles, I think, to set up camp. And it was easy walking. Yeah, we'd have been... It saved us so that we could go on that hike that evening. <laughs> <laughs> Wish we could have rode the llamas. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah, deep. They were excellent to have. Yeah. We were able to bring a little more gear than you typically would for a backcountry pack. Oh, I saw that. In the tent, oh. you had a you had an extra duffel bag there of, what was it, Butterfingers and Lifesavers, and I don't even know yeah. what all you had in there. I thought maybe the, the llamas would need snacks. But yeah. That, 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 was, that was your dad joke. <laughs> when we were packing, he pulled out the little bag of lifesavers. Yes, exactly. That's why that one made it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If For those of you that don't know, my oldest son, Isaac, is type 1 diabetic. And, you know, we've learned uh, how to manage carbs and sugars and everything. But I was on... Uh, the diabetes website ordering some stuff for him the other day and a little box popped up and it said do you accept cookies yeah i thought is that a trick question yeah <laughs> anyway donnie brought enough sugar to turn any of us yes. into a diabetic i think that was i know how to manage my snacks yeah and i know two people that really <laughs> appreciated them <laughs> I'm giving him a hard time, but I had my hand out more than one time asking for a candy bar. So Hey, where'd all my snacks go? Yeah, we burned through some calories on that hunt for sure. Yeah. But uh, we just wanted to get back in remote, steep and deep, and, and hopefully have a chance of finding a mature elk, which I'll tell you, all that anticipation, the, the newness of taking llamas in, being able to go deep to find mature elk, and then the first night... All of that anticipation kind of melts away when you don't see a track, you don't hear a bugle, yeah. you don't see an elk. And, you know, it really takes a little bit of the wind. Uh, you, we might have been overzealous and overexcited there, uh, but it brings you back to reality really quickly that, yeah. hey, it's still hunting. And not only that, we're going to have to work for it yeah. to, to find it's, elk and shoot an elk. Especially with the way that we typically hunt. If we don't get into any tracks, any bugles or anything, we're moving. We would have been <laughs> five to 25 miles away from that area, but we're kind of there. And there was a little bit of talk that night, like, I hope there's something here because yeah. we don't want to have to load up camp and pack eight miles back out. Yeah. So, so, but that is uh, today's strategy for success. I think I, uh, just talking about llamas and the benefits of using pack animals. And I've been around horses. I don't care for them. It seems like it's a train wreck more than work. not. Uh, yeah, just the work that it takes. Uh, llamas, llamas are kind of the, they're the crossover pack animal, I think. They're the one that makes it convenient, easy, no maintenance, and they still pack. So we had three of us that went in there. Uh, I forget how much total weight we had but the llamas will pack 70 or 80 pounds each yeah. uh, without any problem all day you know that's the other funny thing their their pace yes i had yeah. to walk slow for the llama you can't make them go fast 
they they walk at their pace and Bo told us that that yeah. you know imagine the pace that you walk at at a leisurely pace that's what the llamas go and they'll do it all day but if you try to make them go faster they they might give you a little <laughs> bit of a, a struggle so yeah we did have to slow down a little bit but we had uh, no weight on our backs going in and they carried a comfortable camp for us and so that's if you want to get into some more remote country I can't think of a better way to do it than llamas to just get the gear back in there and uh, here in a few episodes maybe we might even be able to show you how they get elk quarters yes. out of there as well so, hopefully yeah but giveaways for today we've got the elk call package from Rocky Mountain hunting calls we've got the we'll give away what ignite today ignite, ignite bugleberry from Mountain Ops We've got the Yeti bottle and mug combo, and we've got uh, the new Gators, the Storm time. Castle Gators from Peaks. First time we've given away a pair of their Gators. So, got those. That's the giveaways for today, and tomorrow we will be back going steep and deep. Yes. <laughs> My legs still hurt. Yes. But. They will hurt tomorrow. On its episode as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, see you back here tomorrow. Do you dream of going on a do it yourself elk hunt but don't know where to start? Or have you previously hunted elk but failed to fill your tag? Are you simply looking to increase your success and become a more consistently successful elk hunter? If you answered yes to any of these questions, the University of Elk Hunting online course is for you. Click here to learn how the University of Elk Hunting online course can help you maximize your elk hunting success.